Hello all beautiful people, Phil from Cabina here. Hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm gonna be covering the COS control system teardown. What that means is basically walking you guys through the, all the steps required to change out pretty much every spare part on here. It's gonna be a bit of a longer one, uh, so grab a beverage, cop a seat, and let's get comfortable. I'll also leave some timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the relevant section if you only need one certain thing. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we'll start simple and at the bottom here. Now, while the chicken loop isn't something that you typically need to replace from wearing out, it is pretty common to swap it out based on your individual riding style and preferences. This happens to be the medium loop. This time of year, we're riding a lot of waves and on the surfboard, so I'm riding a fixed loop system on the harness with the slider attachment. To swap these pieces out, all you wanna do is take the quick release body and push it away from you. The loop will open. And on the static fixed side, all I do is take the end from the other attachment, pop the release open, the other loop falls right out, and I'll pop this one in. And if you put these on, they only go on one way. So if you put them on backwards, it won't go in the other side because of the size mismatch. And that's how you know you've got it wrong, okay? So all you need to do is flip, open it up, flip it around, put the fixed side in, and attach the other side, and we're done. The other one I wanna show you is the freestyle loop. We do make a dedicated larger freestyle loop without a security pin. And what makes this one a little bit different is while it goes in exactly the same, we offer a pro leash style connection. So let me show you how to hook that up. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and open up the loop and get rid of this other attachment that we're not using. I'll go ahead and leave this larger loop off for now because I wanna have easy access to the leash connection, which I'm gonna swap out right here. To do that, all you do is you pull the leash line out until you get to the connection point here, which is where the bungee section connects to the lower flattening line. You wanna loosen the loop to loop connection here. And if you can't do it by hand with your fingers, you can use a tool like an awl or something like this to loosen that knot, get it started, and go ahead and pull these guys apart. Once they're loose, go ahead and slide the leash ring down past the connection point so it's on the opposite side now. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this line apart. And I'm gonna take the plastic end fitting and push it through the loop of the same line on the opposite side and just pull that out and disconnect the two pieces. By the way, if you ever need to replace this bungee line, this is how you get it off. Once that is apart, I can slide the leash connection ring off, put that aside because I'm not gonna be using that. Now I'll take the pro leash connection ring and slide it on. The orientation should be so that this indent section faces up into the quick release and this little arm points down. So I'll slide it through like this because it's meant to actually fit just like that. Now I'll go ahead and just reattach these pieces. So what I'll do is I'll actually take the bungee section with that loop and slide it through the loop of the lower flagging line and then push the plastic end fitting through the, its own loop. Here we want the loop to loop connection to be as small and as thin as possible. So I'll make sure I get out any twists. And when I pull it together, I wanna make sure it's nice and tidy. Like that. Now that this is all back together, I'll just pull the line back through the tubing now I can go ahead and put the freestyle loop on. Again, just like the other ones, it only goes on in one direction. So if you don't have it lined up correctly, it won't fit in, okay? So just flip it to the other side, pop the static side in. And now with this system, I wanna take the release side and put it through the leash connection and then pop it in. And now you can just take a handle pass leash and leash right off to here. So because this is where you leash off to on this fixed point here, this does not allow the flagging system to engage if you drop the bar on a handle pass or you crash and come unhooked or what have you. Okay, so this is an advanced rider setup. When you actually leash off to here, if you drop the bar, the bar will just sheet out and that's as far as it'll go, okay? However, the safety system still does work so that if you needed to actually open this, you'd hit the quick release, the leash would open and then it would pull this. Next, let's talk about the bar end cassettes. These are the adjustable ends in the bar that determine the length and affect the steering response. You just pop them out just like this. And I suggest you generally pull out till you get to the leader line connection. There's a little tab here to loosen the Lark's head loop, loosen that up, slide it off the leader line. This makes it easier to work with. If you're replacing this piece, you wanna reuse obviously this little pigtail. So the easiest way to get that out is to take a little small screwdriver or this awl like I prefer, and just go ahead and expose the knot until it pokes out. Once it is, you can grab a pair of pliers and carefully pull the line out. You'll encounter a little bit of resistance here, right in the middle where the two ends are spliced together. 
and it also helps if you undo this loop so it doesn't get caught when you're pulling through that tiny hole. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and pull this out. There's the piece. You can go ahead and swap this piece out. To get this back in, I find it's easiest to use a little bit of fishing line. It obviously doesn't have to be this long. But what I prefer to do is to go ahead and feed the fishing line through that little loop. And I'll take the two ends and guide it through the little hole here in the end of the bar end cassette. Fold the tab out of the way so everything tries to go in as cleanly as possible. And just give a good tug. Once it's through, continue pulling. And again, you might encounter a little bit of resistance right in the middle where the splices meet, uh, but go ahead and just give it a pull. The knot should automatically seat back into place. And we're ready to go with that part. To reattach it to the leader line, all you wanna do is make that lark's head loop again. And again, we want this to be as clean as possible, so don't just make the loop, but get the twists out that it puts into there when you make it, because we want this to be nice and tidy, just like that. Slide it over the leader line onto the appropriate knot. Obviously when the bars are new, they come shipped on this top knot here, but if you've been riding the bar for any length of time, chances are your bar's probably a little oversheeted. Anytime you do any kind of work like this where you're changing lines or anything with the line lengths itself, uh, it's always a good idea to check the bar again on a fixed post or something and make sure you're not oversheeted. Chances are you probably are, and that's why there's the extra knots. And it's usually the outside lines that need to be lengthened a little bit to match the center lines. So you can go ahead and drop this to the middle knot or even the bottom knot if necessary. To get it back in, just pull the leader line through the top of the bar end float. Be sure the setting matches the other side and uh, suits whatever style you prefer. So if you like the kite to feel a little calmer um, and a little bit more direct with a little firmer feel for steering impulse, then you'd set it to the inside, which is great for smaller kites or unhooked freestyle. Um, otherwise, for the fastest kite possible and the most sensitive bar steering, you'd set it to the outside, which is great for wave riding, big kite loops, maybe even foiling. Um, but again, all personal preference there. Click it into place, pull out any slack, and you're good to go. All right, so let's talk about the line connectors real quick. These are the ends that obviously connect to the bridle of the kite uh, that are at the end of the flying line. To change these out, super simple, uses the standard loop-to-loop -loop connection. You just go ahead and loosen the connection between the two, between the flying line and the line connector itself. Push them together and go ahead and pull that out and then pull it off the loop. To replace them, it's the same process in reverse. You're just gonna take this loop, slide it over the flying line and then take the opposite end of the line connector and then slide it through the loop of the flying line. And you wanna pull them together like this. And again, you want the connection to be nice and tidy, no twisting, clean. Repeat that process for all four and you're ready to go. One thing to keep in mind is with the two front lines, the line connectors are both white, but one of them does have the one X flag on there and that's to tell you which side so that you know when you're rigging is actually the flagging line. So just make sure you hook this pigtail up to the correct line. So next we'll move on to the flying line. Generally you wanna do that part in an open area where you can lay out the entire length of the line and see all the way to the ends. This generally helps with minimizing the line twists and it just makes the whole process simpler. The connection is that standard loop to loop. So you just push the two ends together where the leader line and the flying line join, loosen the connection and pull the line out. You're gonna pull the entire length out. And when you get to the end, just pull the connector through and then slide the loop over the leader line and you're done. The easiest method I found to reconnect is the same loop to loop connection is to take the loop of flying line, slide it over the loop of the leader line, and then take the end of the flying line with the line connector and push it through the loop of the leader line. And then you're just gonna go ahead and pull that entire length out. And when you get to the end, make sure they join in a nice, clean loop to loop connection with no twisting. If there is any twisting in any of the loops, Make sure you just roll them out so that they're nice and straight, even. And it should be a nice clean connection just like this. All right, so that process or method works the same for both outer lines, which is pretty self-explanatory. The front lines are a little bit different, mostly with the flagging line, but let's uh, disconnect this fixed side of the front line first. And to do that, you just loosen the loop that it's tightened around on itself here around the power bracket. We'll just push that into itself to make it loose. And then we're just gonna pull that line all the way out through itself. So when we get to the end, just pull the line connector through and then the loop side should pass right through the power bracket. Just like that. 
For the flagging line, the process is actually a little different in that we're gonna first disconnect the bungee section by pulling it out the tube, just like we did when we were changing it out. Push the loop-to-loop -loop connection together, loosen it. Don't forget to slide the leash ring up above the connection point so you can get it off. And then again, we're gonna take the plastic end fitting and pass it through its own loop at the other end, pull it through, disconnect it. Let the leash ring come off. And now we can pull the line out through the, the tubing and it'll come out just like this. And when you get to the top, to completely disconnect it. We'll pull it through the power bracket seat here and all the way through. And now we're disconnected and that also removes the power bracket seat. So if we need to replace this, this is how you get to it. To remove the trim line, if you're replacing the part because it's worn out, the simplest thing to do is just cut it off and then just pull the pieces out. Um, obviously to get to the end where it's anchored into the cleat, you're gonna remove this bolt. It's a sex bolt, so you wanna hold one side while you're undoing the other side. This is a T20 Torx. And we'll go ahead and just loosen that off. After you unscrew it, the whole thing will come apart. And I just generally like to put them back together just by a few threads, just so I don't lose it either side. And then the fixed end will actually come out of the cleat. And once it's out, you can pull it through the power bracket and through the cleat. If you are reusing the trim line because you're working on some other part of the bar, then obviously just set this aside. But the reinstallation process is exactly the same, just the opposite. If we're swapping out the D power main line or the safety line tubing, then of course we will need to remove that trim line. So let's back out this bolt, pop the opposite side out, screw them together and we'll pull this line through the power bracket through the cleat and we'll set those aside for later to remove the cleat we basically want to push the flagging line tubing up and out of the cleat system there's a little spring clip on there that you just got to push past it and it pops out like this once it's out and out of the way you can go ahead and push the deep power main line up and there's a little pin in there that holds it in place so make sure you don't lose this and that will actually free it up. So now I can pull this out through the bottom. Now to get this little spring clip off, you can just squeeze the two ends together with a pair of pliers and that loosens it up and then you can work it down till it's out of the way. If it needs a little extra help, you can always take a flathead screwdriver and just carefully work it down and out of the way. Once the spring clip is off the end fitting, just slide it down and out of the way and it, then you want to just twist this piece out. If it doesn't want to come out right away, generally a small flat head screwdriver getting right into the seal between the two and just gently pry it down. Alternatively, you can use a box wrench like this. This happens to be 7 16 or a crescent wrench is also great because it's adjustable to fit right around the flared end of the tubing that it doesn't grab the tubing, but it will actually grab the lip of the plastic fitting. And then you can actually just push it off and work it loose this way and that'll pop right off, and there we go. You can set that aside. Same with the spring clamp, slide it off the end, put those pieces aside. And now with everything off, this will slide out of the cleat. Because there's a little flare in the tubing here, there's a little bit of resistance, but you should be able to push right past it. Now with everything free off the top, you can go ahead and pull both of these tubings out the bottom of the bar, and we can go ahead and disconnect them from the bottom end here where the quick release is. To do this, we're just gonna take that same two and a half mil hex key, and undo the screws that are on each side of the spinning handle. With both of those off, you should be able to rock the spinning handle back and forth until it comes up. It is a pretty snug fit, but it will come out and off just like this. You can go ahead and slide that piece off. Again, the flare here in the top is gonna make it a little bit difficult, but you can just pull right past it. And if you need a little help, you can either cut that off if you're not using it at all or not gonna use it again, or just squeeze that piece with a pair of pliers and then pull it right off. With the top half of the spinning handle now off, we can actually remove the two pins that are securing the line in place. You can tap them out with a small awl or a hammer if you need to. Generally, they should push out with, with not too much effort. Pull them completely out, same with the opposite side. And now that that's off, you can pull this whole piece off and the D power main line is actually looped around that piece. So you'll pull it out of the bottom half of the spinning handle. And then we're left with the tubing that the one X flagging line passes through and that'll actually feed through the bottom. This whole assembly will start to come apart here. So just be aware of that. You can pull the whole thing out and the metal shaft can actually slide completely off and be aware that there is the ceramic bearings here 
at the bottom of that piece. So just don't lose those. So if you're reusing this part, then getting past this flare again can be helped with just a set of needle nose pliers, just flattening it off, getting it started, and just pull through it. If you happen to be replacing the ceramic bearings, this is how you get to them. I'll just slide this off. It's a three piece set here. Take the new ones, cut the zip ties off. The bearings themselves sit in between the two races on either side, just like this. You slide them down and that will sit back in here. So next, let's go over how to reinstall a new set or your existing set of D-Power mainline and flagging line tubing. We'll start with the D-Power mainline. I feel like once you get that installed and locked into place, it really helps set the foundation and keep everything in place while you're putting in this other one in. So we'll start here. First thing to do is identify which side we're working with. Uh, we want to take the side with the larger loop here and we want to go ahead and flatten that off and just pinch it as tight as possible because we need it to go into this slot in the lower half of the spinning handle. So to do that, we'll again, make sure it's as tight as it can be, compressed as it can, and go ahead and feed it in there. Get as much as we can going through. And then we'll flip it over and we'll grab either a set of pliers or an awl or something to just to grab the end and kind of pull it all the way through like this. Once you pull it through, it's helpful to actually jam the end of the tubing into that slot as far as possible, because the objective here is we want as much line on the inside to work with as possible to make the installation process easier. Now we'll go ahead and take the stainless shaft and slide it back into the QR body. Make sure that the ceramic bearings are installed and are oriented correctly. Slide that up into place. When we actually put this assembly together, it only goes in one way. And you wanna take the higher side here of the metal shaft and have it facing on the same side as the D-Power main line is entering from. We'll go ahead and loop the line around the metal shaft and pop this guy into place. And when I do, you'll know it's in the correct position because it'll lock the spinning handle onto the metal shaft. And now when I turn it, it also is spinning the shaft as well. With the lower section of the spinning handle now installed all the way down, I can go ahead and put the retaining pins back in and that'll help lock it into place. And they should go in with fairly minimal effort. You might need something to compress it just because it's such a small area. I'll just use these channel locks here. So for the side that the D-Power main line enters and exits through, sometimes the line is just creeping into where that hole is. So it helps to just give a good pull onto that side and pull it down just to really help move it out of the way, clear a path for the pin. So now that we have the D-Power main line secured in place, let's go over how to thread on the flagging line tubing. And there's two different ways to do this, depending on whether you're reusing the existing one uh, on your control system or you're replacing it from a new spare parts kit. Uh, let me go ahead and show you how to do both. The easiest way I found to get this flared section back through the stainless shaft is to use just a little bit of soapy water. So what we're gonna do is just put just a little bit here on the very end, and then the same thing, just a couple drops on the inside. So you wanna take the edge, cram one side in, and then fold the other end over. So it essentially you just taco the end of that flared section. Once it's in, we wanna go ahead and just wipe down the area that you're about to grab onto so you have a nice solid purchase there and you're not sliding up and down the tube. And then we'll go ahead and just push this through. And you wanna just push the end through until it comes through the top, just like this. And then go ahead and pull it all the way through and let it seat in the bottom, like so. Wipe down any excess soapy residue so it's nice and clean and dry. And that's it. So the other method involves threading the tubing through using this braided sleeve. This comes on the latest version of the spare part here. So if the spare part that you purchased didn't come with the sleeving, don't worry about it. You can literally just thread this through with the soap and water trick that we just covered and it works beautifully. For those of you using the sleeving, go ahead and leave the tube in there. This easy thing to do here is just take the loop that's on the end, fold it over in half, thread it through the bottom of the QR and just push it through till it shows through the top. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this through, pulling the knot all the way through to the other side. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this loop and anchor it around something. So this loop pretty much serves as a handle. And if you're doing this by yourself, whether it's at home or in the garage somewhere, the easiest thing I found is just to loop this around a doorknob. Something that's just a fixed object that you can pull against and put a little bit of load on. For the purposes of this demonstration, I just have a clamp here anchored to the end of the table just so I can show you how this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and loop that around the clamp. So with one hand, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the sleeving with the tube and go ahead and pull that tight, cinching it down so that this area gets compressed. And with my other hand, I'll go ahead and just pull the QR down over that sleeving and continue to pull it all the way through until the sleeving comes out the top. 
Once it does, you can go ahead and remove the sleeving and then go ahead and pull the tubing all the way to the top. And that's it. So with both of the tubes now in place, we can go ahead and put the top half of the spinning handle on. Obviously, as with all other parts that interact with these tubes, uh, there are two different diameter holes. So just make sure that the D-Power main line goes through the smaller one and then the flagging line tubing will go through the larger one. So again, with this flared section, it won't pass through on its own, but the simplest way to have found to do this is just take one end, push it through so the top end is just poking out, and then we're gonna grab a set of needle nose pliers, grab that end, and just give it a little twist to fold it over. And then you see it folds and comes right through the top. And then we'll just go ahead and pull that through. With that one on, we can go ahead and take the D-Power main line, pinch the end here, and just thread it through the smaller diameter hole. And before we slide the, the top half on, we wanna make sure that the D-Power main line is pushed all the way into that slot as much as possible. And we'll go ahead and slide this down. It does require a little bit of force just because it's slightly off center. And we'll go ahead and just pull that down and into place. With the top half now in place, I can go ahead and reinstall those little grub screws, one on each side. And you wanna make sure that you don't screw these down too tight. They're just going into plastic and it's really just to hold the part in place. So I'd say snug is where we wanna be here. All right, so with the bottom half of the assembly now complete, we can go ahead and thread this into the bar. And again, we're gonna make sure we're threading the D-Power main line through the smaller opening in the bar and then the flagging line tubing through the larger opening. Slide those all the way through. And now we can start building up the top half of the assembly with the trim line, the cleat, et cetera. So the first thing I'll do is go ahead and get the D-Power main line threaded back on. And we'll insert that through the bottom of the cleat here, push it all the way through till it exposes the loop. And we wanna just open that loop. Once the loop is sitting nice and open like this, I can go ahead and put the retaining pin back in there. Okay, I want that to be as centered as possible. Before I pull this down into place, I wanna make sure that the orientation is correct so the tubes aren't twisted on each other. So I'll pull everything nice and snug here. And I can see that the way they wanna sit in this vertical orientation, and that means that the pin will sit just like this so that when I pull it into place, I can see that it goes in nice and straight all the way down. And now I can go ahead and put the flagging line tubing up and through the cleat, just like this. And the same check should be applied here so that what I'm doing is double checking that the lines are all straight and not twisted on each other. So I'll know when I put this plastic fitting in, it's gonna go in only one way and it'll go in in this vertical orientation to keep everything nice and straight. What I'll do is I'll do one final check to make sure that the orientation is correct and everything's straight. And I can see that this is the way it needs to go. So I'll just push the tubing up just a little bit, put the spring clamp back on and then take the plastic fitting and I'm gonna go ahead and orient this so it sits correctly. So that when I push it down and into place, this plastic end actually will sit directly into the cleat without any twisting of either tube. And then with the spring clamp, what I found the easiest way is just to let this sit down and in place where it normally would sit. It's all seated correctly. And then I'll just go ahead and pull it with a little bit of force and that'll actually sit the spring clamp into place. So that now when I push it up, I could see it's already on there. And if I wanna get it just to the very, very top, I can just use a little screwdriver and just let it sit just a little bit higher here, but all the work is essentially done for me already. And now we're ready to thread through the trim line. We're gonna take the trim line here with the small loop on one end, and we're gonna feed that up and into the cleat. Now we're gonna go ahead and feed it through the power bracket, and it's important to note that the direction you feed it through will affect the side that the flagging line is on. So I can see here that when I pull the lines straight, and the trim cleat is in front of me here, I know that if I feed the cleat through the top this way and back through, my flagging line will be on the left. If I actually prefer it the other way, I can just flip this around, feed it through here, and now the flagging line will be on the right. That's a personal preference. If you actually wanted to change that depending on your location, it takes all of a minute to do. You can do that at the beach, provided you have a driver to undo the sex bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and feed mine through so that the flagging line is on the left, since that's my preferred setup. I'm gonna go ahead and feed that through the power bracket, and then we're gonna go back down. So again, I just wanna double check. Orientation is correct here, so there's no twisting going on. Right before I secure the line in place, I'll go ahead and put a driver through that tiny hole. So we'll go ahead and make it open and nice and proud. Push this down and into place. Take the female end, with, I can see that that's gonna mate with the square hole opening. Feed that down in there. And then I'll take the male side and screw it down into place. So my setup looks like this, with the flagging on the left. And again, if you did wanna change that, it's as simple as just unscrewing this, pull it out, take this trim line, pull it out of the power bracket, flip it around, feed it back through, and then just put everything back together. 
screw the bolt back in. And now when I pull everything tight, my flagging line is actually on the right side. So this is a simple customizable change that could be done anywhere at any time and literally takes a minute. And there we go. The trim system is now fully assembled and we're ready for lines. We'll start with the front line since those two are slightly different from each other. If you remember from earlier in the video, I'm gonna start with the flagging line that goes through the power bracket seat and through the tubing. So what I'll do is first poke this through the hole and feed it through. The power bracket seat, the tolerance in there is pretty tight, so generally you won't be able to get it through just like this. But again, this is where the fishing line trick comes into play. You don't need one that's this long, but it helps for a couple different reasons, and I'll show you why. I'll feed the fishing line through the loop of the flying line, double it over, and then through the opening in the power bracket seat. And you wanna make sure that you go through the top cones of the tapered section first, so it actually sits correctly into the power bracket. When you get to the end here, just pull it through, should pop right through. And I'll generally pull it a little too far, just so I know it stays in there and it's not going anywhere. So that's ready. The next step is to go ahead and feed this line through the tubing here where the flagging line passes through. Generally, you can do this freely by just making the line nice and straight, especially in the very beginning, and then feeding it through the tubing. And if the tubing is straight, it should go all the way through. If you do encounter any resistance where it feels like the line's not going any further, it's no problem. Again, this is where that fishing line comes into play. Go ahead and pull the line out. And now I'll take my fishing line, and now you see why I have it this length, is I'll feed it through the loop of the line again, double it over, and this is the length to be just long enough to poke out the bottom of the tubing. So I'll take both loose ends here of the fishing line, and I'll feed them in there. And this just works great because it's just a little bit stiffer than the flying line. And so it should be able to find its way down and out the bottom of the quick release uh, assembly very easily. So I'll just feed that all down until the end comes out, which it is right here. And then I'll just pull the line through, comes out like this, get rid of the fishing line. With the flying line pulled out the bottom now, this is where we're gonna reconnect it to the bungee section. The first step is to take the leash connection ring and slide it over the flying line. You wanna do so so the big hoop where you actually connect your leash to is facing up. Slide it out of the way, and then we're gonna do that standard loop-to-loop -loop connection. And the way you do that on this one is you take the bungee section, and put it through the loop of the flying line. Now with that big loop that's on the end of the bungee line, put the plastic fitting through itself, right there, and then pull it through. This knot passes through the system, so we want that as clean and as tidy as possible. So I'll undo any twists in there, so it's not rolling over itself. And when we do cinch it together, we have a nice, clean, thin knot. Okay, I'll move the leash ring all the way to the bottom so it's out of the way. And now I can pull that line out the end, you see if I did the knot correctly, it passes right through with no problem, and that line is off. With the fixed side, it's actually a little bit more traditional, and then you'll poke it through the angled hole there on the power bracket, and you'll take the rest of the line and push it through the loop, and then you'll just go ahead and pull the rest of that line out. When you get to the end here, pull the pigtail through, you wanna go ahead and cinch this down, and that's how we should be looking. It's also good to double check that as I pull this fixed section nice and tight, the pigtail that I pulled through that's connected to the end of that line is the non-1x side, so I know I got it hooked up correct. Okay, so I'm just gonna repeat this process for the outside lines, and I'm just making sure also at the same time that the left and right lines are correctly identified on the left and right side. All right, so I got all the lines back on, chicken loop, deep power main line, cleat assemblies all back together. The last thing I wanna cover with you is the bar end bungees. It's pretty unlikely that you'd need to replace these, but if you do, I'm assuming one broke and you're replacing it. So in which case you've already pulled the old one out, which is what we have here. Just, this is just an EVA bar end with no bungee in there. So let's go over how to do that. So there's potentially several ways to do this. I'm just sharing with you the easiest way I've found that saves the most time and the least amount of headache. So let me show you. What I do is take a stiff piece of wire like this coat hanger and I'll insert it into the bottom opening of where the bungee pokes out, which is this opening here and I'll shove it through until I see the end of the coat hanger come through here. And when I see the end of the coat hanger poke by that hole, I'll go ahead and hold it in place, bend the foam float over, and there it is. So I'll go ahead and pull out just enough to expose some end here. Then I'll take the trusty piece of fishing line that I keep around, even up the two ends like this, put them right next to the coat hanger, and I usually have some overlap there of, I don't know, a few inches, and then I'll take some tape and I'll wrap the ends together. I want to wrap this nice and tight, kind of spiraling up as I go, so there's good grip on it. I'll go ahead and pull the hanger out through the bottom until the fishing line pokes out, but not all the way through. So I'll then untape the fishing line, and I'll pull the fishing line through 
until there's just a loop left exposed here at the top. I'll then take my bungee line, make a little arc's head loop with the fishing line, snug it up just like this, and then I'll pull the line through. You don't want to obviously pull all the line through because we're going to have to do this other section to go around the other end of the bar. So once the bottom end pokes out, I'll loosen the fishing line off and then we'll want to secure that end. And to do that, we're going to take the plastic fitting that comes with the bungee section and put it through one of the holes, slide the part down so you have enough working room to tie a little overhand knot. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to tie a little overhand knot right in the very end. And the closer to the end you can make this, the cleaner it'll be. So you generally don't want this kind of tail sticking out because you won't be able to get it back into the little piece. So we want this all the way at the very end. And if it helps to hold the tail a little bit with some needle nose pliers without smashing it too much, just to pull everything nice and tight. And you want there to be as small of a tail as possible. And then I'll just singe the ends a little bit so it's not fraying. And I'll pull that end into place and the knot should sit right in that groove. So as a little safety precaution, I've gotten a little too carried away with pulling the other end through, and I've actually pulled this up back and into the bar end. So just to prevent me from doing that, I'll just put a clamp on here so it can't actually get pulled into there, okay? And so what I'll do now is repeat that same process, but for the opposite side. So I'll flip the bar around, take my coat hanger, push it all the way up until I can see the end, fold the bar end over, and the end should poke right out. Same as before, we'll just take the fishing line and tape the ends to the coat hanger. So with that taped up, I'll go ahead and pull that through. Okay, once that's done, I'll separate the two pieces. And then again, I'll pull the line until there's just a little bit of a loop left. Now I'm gonna make that lark's head again. Take the loose end of bungee, cinch it down, and then pull it through. Guide the bungee line into the groove. Then I'll loosen off the fishing line Get rid of that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. Now keep in mind with both ends out, it will wanna actually suck back in because of the tension from the bungee itself. So you wanna be careful that you don't actually slip and this, this goes back inside, otherwise you'll have to repeat this process over. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread this bungee line back through here, but before I do that, I need to remember to put on the little tab, okay? This is the little pull tab. And so this goes on just like this. I'll just tuck that out of the way for now. And then same thing as before. Just try and get that end through the opening. And then if you need a little help, you can grab it with a pair of tweezers or some needle nose pliers. Pull out more than enough because you want some working room to make that knot. And again, it's just a simple overhand knot. Again, with the smallest tail you can possibly make. Almost so it's not even there. So it tucks away nice and clean. And you'll see why in just a second. So with this tied off, I'll go ahead and pull that back into the end and you'll see if I've done my job correctly, both of the knots should be sitting inside that little piece and out of the way. Now I can go ahead and pull the tab in and the tab is a nice snug fit. It only fits on one way. So if you look at where this little tab is on the plastic fitting, that should be facing the same direction as the pull tab itself. So you'll go ahead and work it in. It takes a little bit of finesse just to get it started. Push a little bit from the back here to help guide it in. It's sort of a combination of pushing and pulling here just to get it to slide over that plastic fitting. So there we go. What I do notice is when I'm done with the installation here, there's a little bit uneven tension here because one side is tighter than the other. You see how it sits crooked and there's slack on this side. So I'll figure out which side that is here up at the top. And basically all I want to do is even out that tension one more time. And there we go. So you just want to repeat that process for the other side and we're done. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, go ahead and hit that like button and please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this. If you should have any questions about any of your Cabrina gear, you can always drop us a note to support at cabrina.com. We'd love to hear from you. And please be sure to check out the rest of our range of exciting new products on our website at cabrina.com. Mahalo for watching and we look forward to seeing you on the water. Aloha.